to the Word and the teaching of the Word. And if you have a Bible, wherever you might be, it's faith that wins out. God has given every one of you faith, but your faith can be weak, your faith can be misused, your faith can be laid down. But when you get the faith of God stirred up inside of you, you might have been knocked down, you might have been knocked out, you might have been pushed out of the way, but when God restores you and God sees you, what he has made you through his son, Christ Jesus, that's what makes a difference. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, it says, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that hear it. There's a lot of preaching going on nowadays, and there's a lot of people that say, well, I don't need this faith preaching no more, but I got news for you. It's the faith preaching, it's the faith teaching, and if Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of your faith, you need to be preaching about Jesus, because when Jesus comes on the scene of your life, the first thing that he does for each and every one of you, he gives you a measure of his faith. Every one of you have a measure of faith once you start seeking God. And he gave you a measure of faith even before you start seeking God to start seeking him. And the Bible says everyone that seeks shall find. Some of you out there, you're seeking every other street and avenue of parts of life. And you let the devil take you down a path of destruction and despair. But I got news for you. There's many of you right now in the sound of this preacher's voice that are bound by the sins of drunkenness, adultery, lying and stealing and hatred and murder. Demons or drugs have grabbed a hold of your life and people today don't want to believe about demon control. But when you're out of control, but you think you have control, but it's not in the will of God, you have demon influence, you have demon possession. And like I preach many times, Jesus Christ went around doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The devil can oppress you, and if you yield to him long enough, he will possess you. But if you have Christ in you, through faith, the devil can never possess you, he might oppress you. People today are filling our hospitals. They're emptying our churches because of oppression. They're locking themselves in their home. They're trying to find their own little corner of the world. They're trying to sniff it up their nose, shoot it up their vein, lying, cheating, and stealing to satisfy the flesh. But the flesh will never be satisfied because every human flesh has a spirit that's down inside of it. And Jesus Christ wants to possess that spirit and the devil wants to take it away from you because with the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead. It tells us in the book of James. I got news for you. In James chapter 2, verse 26, it says, For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Dead faith will get you nowhere. Dead faith is something that's just sitting there and not being used. Amen. It's sort of like an automobile that had a brand new battery in it, but somebody left a little short wire on a switch somewhere, or they left the ignition turned on, and they walked away from it, and they come back a long time later, and they said, well, the thing's brand new, and it should start, but the thing ran down, it lost its power, it's lost its uh, zeal to be able to turn the engine over, amen, and set everything in operation that was supposed to set in operation. Some people have left the church, they have left the faith, thinking that they were going to be all right. Now, you went down the broad way of road, and everybody that broad and wide is the way of destruction, Amen. But there's a road that's straight and narrow, and few they are that find it. And it's the, for the, we walk by faith and not by sight. It takes faith to walk on a faith walk. You have to get up and say, I believe God, and I accept what God has to offer me. And when you start accepting God, guess what? Even gambling, alcohol, fear, jealousy, and yes, witchcraft. People are dabbing in witchcraft, fortune telling, and you name it, they got their birthstone, and they got their lucky stars, and they got their soothsayers, and they got this and that, and they're trusting in something. But something will not get you without the faith of God. You need Jesus Christ. You need to make Jesus make you free. Jesus said, who I have set free is free indeed. I had baggage in my life. I had bondage in my life. I had sin in my life. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It doesn't leave one person out, but one, guess what? If you could continue down that road without Christ, it will not get better. It will just keep loading you down, 
loading you down. You might have heard the old expression, that was the last straw on the cart, and the cart broke down. It might be the last thing that somebody put on you, and you had a breakdown. Our hospitals are filled up with people that have breakdown. Saint Psalms are filled up with people whose minds are just snapped. And I got news for you. You need your mind renewed and refreshed in Jesus Christ. And it's going to take faith to do that. Jesus can make you free. There is nobody else who can. Amen. The devil come to kill, steal, and destroy out of John 10.10. But Christ came to give you life and life more abundantly. Now, I don't know about you. Abundant life is abundance. How many know what abundance means? Abundance is more than you can even calculate and more than you can count. And not only that, if you really receive Jesus Christ by faith and we believe why God sent his only begotten son out of John 3, 16, that takes faith to believe that. And once you accept that, he'll receive whosoever cometh to him. He won't cast nobody out. Even some of them titles or some of them names that I just spoke prior to that, maybe that's one of your captions in your life. Jesus Christ will come to you because he come to seek and to save that was lost, and it takes faith. And the Bible tells us in the book of Mark, Jesus made a statement in Mark chapter 4, verse 40, why is it that you have no faith? And here Jesus was with those disciples in Mark chapter 4, and he told them, he said, let us go over to the other side. And in obedience, they got in the ship, they got on the boat, they got out in the water, and they were heading towards the other side. They were in the perfect will of what God asked them to do. Sometimes you're in the perfect will of what God wants you to do, and you feel like, I'm doing everything right in my heart I feel led to do. And all of a sudden, everything begins to fall apart. You feel like you lose control. Now, these were men that were expert fishermen. They knew how to handle a boat. They'd been on boats before. They'd been out in the sea before. They'd been in storms before. They saw the waves coming up, and they knew the water would come in the boat, and they knew how to get the water out of the boat. But this day, a, a great storm arose. But remember, the promise was already given. Jesus said, let us. Now, Jesus didn't wait on shore and said, well, you guys go over and see us safe there, and then come back and get me later. He went right with them. Whatever you're going through, I'm telling you, if you ever met Jesus in your life, he's with you and he's going with you. But it takes faith to believe that. And Jesus, on the whole time when everything was going on and everybody was panicking and everybody was having their problem, they had faith to get in the boat. They had faith to go on the other side. They had faith to get in the water. But all of a sudden, fear, doubt, and unbelief got over all of them. Why? Because they got their eyes off of the promise. They got their eyes on the storm, and it was a great storm. And after a while, the Bible says there was fierce winds, and the boat filled up with water. This is what happened in Mark chapter 4. Now, these people started out with faith. But they went from that little faith that God has given them to no faith. Do you ever wake up in the morning and didn't have no faith? Do you ever go out on a job and didn't have no faith? Do you ever come to church without faith? You know, you could be in a building, but guess what? If you don't have any faith, it takes faith to come to church and hear the word of God. Amen. It needs to be preached with faith. And I'm preaching to you by faith today that God will hear you and God will receive you and God will help you and God will bring you through the situation. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he said to him, why is it you have no faith? Because they went to him, found Jesus on the back part of the ship asleep. Now, it amazes me a lot of times, and I just joke around with this because I know a lot of people that have water beds, and they say they're wonderful, and it's some new uh, type of a bed. But I got news for you. Jesus had the first water bed. He not only walked on the water by faith, he slept on the water because if the boat was full of water and he was back there sleeping, guess what? He had to be sleeping on water. Amen. And they got him awake, and he said, they said to him, which I do so myself sometimes, Lord, don't you care that we perish? Don't you care that we're having this problem? Don't you care that we can't control it? Don't you care we've done everything we knew what we could do before we got you involved in it? And guess what? He said, why are you so fearful? Why is it you have no faith? The author and the finisher of their faith was right there with them. Maybe your faith has wavered and your problem is bigger than your faith right now. I got news for you. Your works is not going to get it done. You need to get that faith stirred up back in your heart and say, I'm going to believe God. Amen. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 6, it says you have the shield of faith. Now, what is a shield used for? It's nothing that hang on the wall. It's something that you put before you for whatever is coming at you. And it takes faith to take this word of God and put it before you like a shield. Amen. And say, I'm standing behind the word of God. 
I'm putting the word of God out there before me. And whatever is coming against me, have to hit that shield. And guess what? A shield is put on your part of your arm and is put this way and that way. Whatever the enemy would throw at you, you put it up to resist it. When the enemy comes at you with a great storm, amen, and the ship's filled up and you're losing control, you have to get Jesus awake in fear and say, Lord, don't you care that we perish? Jesus gets up and the first thing he says was, peace. Be still. He rebuked the wind. He rebuked the storm. And the word rebuke means stop it. Did that not take faith? Remember now, who's the author of faith? The Bible lets us know in Hebrews that Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. So when the great author gets up and speaks faith, things begin to respond. They were astonished at his word. They were astonished at his authority. And he has given that authority unto every believer of you to have a measure of faith from God. God says we have faith. And remember now, Faith that wins out. God don't want you to become a child of God and a loser. God didn't create you to be a loser by your natural birth. God created man to have fellowship with his heavenly father, God himself, amen, that the world was supposed to be a perfect paradise. It was supposed to be a place that you will be blessed and live for eternity. But sin has creeped in. Denial has creeped in. Man has been deceived and he has followed the wrong path. And now, because of the man's natural sin, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this is what the cross is all about. This is what the preaching of the cross is all about. By faith, Jesus Christ willingly went to the cross. He crucified, amen, willingly laid down his life that you and I could have the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ himself. He redeemed us purchased us with his blood. He paid the price. That's what that means. He paid the price for all your wrongdoings and all my wrongdoing. And it takes faith to believe that. If somebody would stand up after you'd done everything wrong in the natural, and the one that had authority where you were at would come in and say, okay, whoever done all the wrong here, there's going to be some punishment to go along with it. There's going to be things required of them to go along with it. And somebody in the room would stand up and say, I'm going to take their place. Whatever they've done, I'll accept the consequences. Well, I don't know about you. If I was a guilty one, I would just sit back down and say, go ahead. <laughs> well, i got news for you. This is what Jesus is. Just sit right back and he says, I will take all of that off of you if you have faith to believe me. he done the work. You and I received the faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. And see, I, wanted, I was going to bring a, a covering to put over me today, but I forgot to bring it along. I have a big red cloth that I was going to just stand up here that you couldn't even see me and have this big red cloth cover me, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And I was going to preach to you for a little bit under that cloth, but some of you probably would have turned me off before I even had a chance to open up my mouth. So guess what? I didn't put that over me, but I'm telling you, I have a red covering over me right now, even though you can't see it. The Heavenly Father looks down and he sees it, and he sees the blood of Jesus Christ and by faith by the blood of Jesus Christ I am covered amen and I'm on, under God's grace through faith and grace I am saved not of works that any man should boast I'm not working for grace I receive grace God's redemption at Christ's expense it caused Jesus to give grace unto you and I and it takes faith to receive that gift amen how many know God wants to make you a winner Amen. If you got a Bible, also turn along with me. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7, most of us from little children on up, and scientists today are still finding evidence in all kinds of different places. They're finding a great ship that was painted on the wall, and it had people on it, and it had animals on it, and all different cultures and all different nations. They're finding evidence that people realize that sometime in their uh, history of their ancestors, there was this type of a ship, and it goes right back because there was a ship just like this. Amen. But God had to have somebody build it. Amen. And it says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen, yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saying, amen, an ark to the saying of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heirs of righteousness is by, by faith. By faith Noah being warned of God. What did Noah do? He heard God by faith. He knew that his house could be saved by faith. And it took something to contain them in. Now back there God said, I want you to build an ark. An ark that I would describe to you a certain size. Made out of certain wood. Made out of certain this and that. And not only that, when you get it all complete, 
I'm going to have animals come to you of every kind. They're just going to come in, just let them in the door. Amen. You're talking about living in a living zoo? Well, Noah was one of the first ones that lived in there. Amen. And the ark was built. He had his sons uh, help out and their wives. And when God says the ark was finished, remember he was warned of God. I got news for you. God is warning the world today. There is people right now that are getting in destruction. They're getting in famines. They're getting in wars. They're getting in earthquakes. They're getting in fires. They're getting in pestilence. They're getting, you name it, is going on all this world today. I just turned on the news this past week, and there was people just the other night that were down in Florida. They decided they're going a night out on the town. They went to this restaurant to eat out over the bay. And they were just having good fellowship, planning on having a good night, whatever it was, and probably returning home or whatever it was after a hard week of the work. Well, the whole thing collapsed and half of them fell into the bay. I don't think they were expecting that. Things can happen. Great storms, situations can come in your life. I just heard on the news this past week where people were working at a chemical plant. They worked there for quite a while, and all of a sudden, a great explosion. The whole thing blows up. They weren't expecting that. People lose their lives. People out in the Midwest of our country, you know, tornadoes come through. Half the city's wiped away. Houses destroyed. Fires right now consuming people's homes. I got news for you. God might not be the cause of the problem, but man's sin is helping the problem to arise up and get greater because they do not want to receive by faith what God has in store for them. I pray for those people that had losses. I pray for those people that are going through there by faith. And I also thank God that he will put the blood of Jesus Christ and the guardian angels around my household, over my children, over my family, over my loved one, because God's word says by faith I have the right to speak that. Amen. Because faith always wins out. God wants you to win out. God wants to take care of you. And Noah, he built the ark. People laughed at him. People mocked him. Look at that crazy kook. What is that thing he's building out there in the front yard? Some of their neighbors said, if we knew he, he was going to be that kind of neighbor, we would have never bought a, our real estate's going down because some kind of kook over here is building something that nobody even saw. His name was Noah. He built the ark. But guess what? By faith, he continued on. Sometimes you're doing something by faith because God spoke to you and it lines up with the word of God and people will shun you, people will laugh at you, people will mock you, people will turn this kind of preaching off. Remember now, preaching not mixed with faith does not profit anybody that hears it. You have to have faith and believe in God and hear his word and then become a doer of the word because faith without works is dead. God wants to move on your behalf. To help you, amen, through your storm, through your test, through your life, through your problem, and it takes faith. First of all, you have to get saved by faith. Through faith and grace you are saved, not of works that any man should boast. I can't boast of what I've done, but I can sure stand up here today and tell you I can brag on the one that done it for me. Now, amen, his name is Jesus. I can brag on the blood of Jesus Christ that still covers my sins, amen. And when God looks down on me, he don't see nothing but the blood. And if I do commit sin, I don't deliberately try to cover it up in my own works. I need to get back to the altar and got godly sorrow in my heart with godly repentance that you don't hear much preaching on anymore today. But guess what? With godly sorrow and godly repentance, God says, I got more blood to cover you than you can get under as you come to me and will confess it and ask me to deliver you and set you free. Don't continue in wrong. Ask God to help you to walk in what's doing right. Just like Noah continued by faith, amen, and God blessed him and his household, and all eight of them were saved. But guess what? The rest of the world was destroyed. Would God save the rest if they would have listened? Yeah, but nobody would listen. Are you out there listening today? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how can you hear without a preacher? You'll be surprised how many people think they don't need a preacher nowadays. Well, I got news for you. God says you do. Amen. And you need to have somebody that's going to preach the word to you because the, the, unto us the gospel preach unto them that hear it. Not being mixed with faith, it profits nobody that hears it. You need to hear some good Bible-believing, faith-preaching that will stir up the faith that God has given every one of you a measure of, and then you begin to walk of it. You don't want to be like the disciples were there in Mark chapter 4 and said, Jesus wakes up and says, why is it you have no faith? God says, I want to increase your faith. And you know, after that, in Luke 8, uh, chapter 17, verse 5, uh, the disciples cried out, Lord, increase our faith. Can faith be increased? Yeah, the more you use it, 
And the more you see in God do it, guess what? It will increase. God wants you you're to take you from no faith and give you a measure of faith and to have an increase in your faith, amen? And then 2 Peter 1 and 5, he wants to add to your faith. What's he want to add to your faith? Every time you talk to God and believe God and do something that God done, you go out and testify and say, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I'm going to testify and tell the world what the Lord has done for me. And guess what? It takes faith to tell people what God is doing. The other month we had around here preaching on your testimonies and, you know, a lot of, quite a few of my testimonies didn't even get preached on, and other preachers were in here, and other people were in here preaching and teaching. And I guess what? If God done that for anybody else, he could do that for you. What is your testimony? The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, he's coming for those that were called, chosen, and faithful. Without faithfulness and without faith, you can't be faithful. That's why God gave every one of you a measure of faith. Amen. And also... Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 6 verse uh, 5 through 8 it talks about a man named Stephen who was full of faith. How many like to be filled with faith and full of faith? That's how God wants he takes you from no faith to increasing faith, add to your faith so you're full of faith. And you know if you're full of faith, you just take God's word as it was and you live it every day, one day at a time. One storm at a time, one test at a time, one valley at a time, one mountain at a time, one breath at a time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Most people ruin half of their life worrying about what's going to happen a year from now. Enjoy today. Are you enjoying today? Did you wake up today with believing that you were going to have a tomorrow? What if tomorrow never comes? I talked to a young lady the other day, and she was uh, mentioned some things about my life, and I looked at her, and uh, we were having a conversation, uh, and she says, well, I know all things. I said, well, that's very good. I said, here's the greatest thing you need to know. You know you have to be born again? She looked at me kind of funny and put her eyes down and walked away. No, that's the greatest thing you can know. You know you have to be born again. You have to be born of the Spirit. You have to be born into the kingdom of God. Amen. And I quoted there a while ago in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, if you're out there with your Bibles and you're taking notes, and you should make sure you're getting the word of God, we walk by faith and not by sight. I guarantee you, that's a walk. If you go by what you're seeing, you're going to be like the disciples in Mark chapter 4. You're going to be fearful. You're going to be unbelieving. You're going to be doubtful. You're going to try everything without faith and find out it's going to fail. And then all of a sudden you're going to try and get Jesus awake in your life. And you know what? He'll come to you. But why wait so long? When you are full of faith, you'll know he's there all the time. Amen. How many know this is the day the Lord has made and you're going to rejoice and be glad in it? I'm glad that God decided to have faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have the shield of faith to resist what's coming at you, what's not a God. Amen. And in Mark chapter 10, if you've got a Bible, turn with me there. It says, Thy faith will... And thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. You know, God talks about faith many times. In Mark chapter 10, we find a, a blind man, blind Barnabas, sitting by the highway side begging. Amen. In Mark chapter 10, going around the 40th verse, 46th verse. And there came to Jericho, Jesus came to Jericho. And he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Barnabas, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. He was sitting there begging, amen. And when he heard that it was Jesus and that, remember faith comes by hearing? He heard of the faith walker. He heard of the author and the finish. He heard about this man, Jesus. And guess what? Something down in his soul stirred up. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, he, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. In plain words, he heard your call, now Jesus is calling you. If you call out to Jesus, he'll call you just like he called this man. Whatever situation you're in, if you call on him, he'll call you. Amen. You ever have somebody say, call me sometimes. I'll call you back. You called me, never called you back. That's people. Amen. And some people nowadays, if they don't want to talk to you at all, they just uh, don't never answer their phone no more. They, they have information that tells who's calling, and they just blot you out. Well, I got news for you. God's calling. And guess what? If you call on him, he'll call you back. Amen. And this blind man called on him, and they said, disciples went to him and said, be a good comfort. 
Now he's calling you. Jesus is calling you, blind man. You're the one that got the problem. Jesus wants to take care of it. Amen. And verse 50, he said, he cast away his garment and he rose and came to Jesus. First thing he did was got rid of his beggar's garment, rose up by faith and said, I'm not going to be a beggar no more. He was still blind, but he was making his living by begging. He knew in himself something was about ready to change. Some of you are out there, something is about ready to change. Amen. You don't have to be entitled to some of those things that I mentioned earlier. You can be set free by the preaching of this word today, and God can turn it around. And he called, cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will that I shall do unto thee? What do you want Jesus to do for you today? You have faith to believe he could do something for you today? Jesus is right there. He's going to answer you if you called him. Now he's going to ask you, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? Do you want this thing changed in your life? Amen. And just like he said, what will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Now, most people right there, if Jesus would have said, what do you want me to do? Can't you see that I'm blind? Can't you see I got this problem? Can't you see that I need this? That's the wrong way to approach God. That ain't faith. Amen. It takes faith to go to him and say, I got a need, Lord. Well, what is it you want me to take care of? Be honest with you. Talk to him. Prayer is talking to God. Amen. It takes faith to talk to God. Amen. And he said, I want to receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith. Whose faith? The blind man's faith did what to him? Made him whole. Amen. And immediately he recovered. Some of you out there right now immediately can be set free from drugs, alcohol, lying, cheating, abortion, Amen. Problems that's been hanging over your life. Amen. It's a scar there that you just can't get rid of. And it's a shame that you wish you wouldn't have done something. And any other title of any other thing out there, I'm here to tell you, God can set you free. Amen. That hatred you got towards somebody, it will hinder you all your life like a heavy weight because you have to learn to forgive. Just like God wants to forgive you, you forgive them. You don't condone what they've done wrong. You learn how to forgive them and then you won't have revenge on your heart. You won't have hatred in your heart. You'll have the love of God. We're talking about faith this much. We're talking about love this much. Amen. We're talking about faith, hope, and charity. Some hope is a thing that's not, not there yet. Faith and hope are very close together. Now, faith is a noun. Amen. Believing is a verb, and you take believing, put it into action with something that is a person, place, or a thing, and then guess what? God will begin to respond to you. And blind Barnabas done something here. Amen. And immediately he received his sight, and I like this laugh, he followed Jesus. He could have went out and said, man, I'm going to go out and see everything that I couldn't see for quite a long time. I want to go down and watch a movie. I want to go over here and see what she looks like. I want to see what that new advertisement is down there. You know, I haven't seen for so long. I got up all this lost time to make. No, he followed Jesus. See, that's the key right there. The author and the finisher of your faith, he'll give you faith to rise up out of your situation, to begin to follow him and to walk with him, amen, and be with him. And guess all those other things will be put behind you. Places you thought you couldn't stop going and you needed them, after a while you'll find, I don't need those places. Some of you have marked up your body so bad on the outside, you didn't realize that, guess what? That still didn't fix the inside. And amen. And if you have a lot of this stuff on your outside today, I'm not condemning you. I'm just trying to tell you, get the inside. Get the inside fixed up. Get the inside cleansed. Get the inside forgiven. And the inward man, as a man thinks in his heart, or as a person thinks in the heart, so is he. That takes faith to believe that. Others will see you one way, but God will see you with a covering. When God looks down on you, he'll see the righteousness of his son, and he'll begin to bless you because you have become heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. After a while, you'll find out that you don't have to gamble. I preached the other week about the four guards that were at the cross of Jesus. They were assigned there by a centurion guard. That was their job for the day. They were doing what they were told to do. They were Roman soldiers, and those four guards that day, it was their job, amen, to take people that were supposed to be crucified, march them up the hill, nail them to the cross, hang them up there, and watch them die. But they took notice Jesus had a garment that was different than everybody else's. And whoever was on guard duty that day, the four guards that always was, whatever that person's possessions were, they had a right to divide it up among themselves. They had, a, they had a right to say, okay, us four, you did this, you get that, and I got that. 
Some people were always out getting. But I got news for you that that day there was a special garment. He had a garment that was seamless, a perfect garment. So they got their heads together. And they decided, let's cast lots, amen, for this garment. And they cast lots and one of them won. And I can imagine, boy, he thought, man, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. He said, man, I just can't wait to take this garment down there and show it to my family. Maybe take it somewhere and sell it to get a great price for it to meet some of my needs. But you know what? The greatest opportunity that he had that day was the Jesus that was hanging on the cross to come to save him. He thought he was a winner, but he left that mountain a loser. God's is before you right now today. Maybe you thought you're winning on your gambling. Maybe you thought you're winning on your drugs or your alcohol and your jealousy and your witchcraft. Maybe you think you're putting spells on people. Maybe you think you have some superpower when the power of darkness. I got news for you. Light will overcome all that darkness. Grace will take you out of darkness. Grace will take you out of sin. Amen. Grace will put you on the table of God where God says, I prepare the table before you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. God prepares a table for you right now in the presence of your enemy. That table is that you can feast upon and say, God's going to take care of this situation. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many know God wants to take care of you? Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 17, verse 19, we find ten men that had a problem. And they also heard about this Jesus. And faith began to stir up, and they were ten leopards. Remember, faith always wins out. Blind one of us won out. Amen. Now these ten lepers, they heard about Jesus. And they all got together and say, hey, you know the rules and the regulations of leopards? We're supposed to stay so much distance from everybody. We have to stand back from everybody. We can't get close to anybody. We have to be so many feet from anybody. We're contagious. What we got, everybody else will get. Well, I got news for you. They were about ready to find out what Jesus has. They were about ready to receive. And they all said, well, let's got a plan. You know, man's plans sometimes have some good effects. And the ten of them got an agreement, and they said, when we get close enough, we can get Jesus' attention. But we have to stay so far back, a leopard had to stay almost 300 feet behind everybody else. They were not allowed to condemn, and they had restricted areas. But they said, this is what we're going to do. When we find out that Jesus is coming close enough, we're going to all cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Can you imagine ten people, ten men all at the same time, crying out at the same time for the same need, and guess what? Jesus heard them. Maybe there's a group of you out there. Jesus hears you. Maybe you're an individual. Jesus will hear you. It doesn't matter how many you are or how few you are. If you call out on him, he'll answer you. And they called out on him, and the first thing Jesus did, he answers them, and he says, uh, Go show yourself to the priests and be cleansed. Obedience. They cried out by faith. They were expecting something. Remember, faith always wins out. God wants you to win out today. Are you a loser or are you a winner? You can go through life always say, I'm always a loser. I'll never amount to nothing. I'll never have anything. I'll never get nowhere. I guess who? Show me that chapter in the Bible. Show me where you have to stay that way. I can show you a way out in the Bible, and Jesus Christ is that way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man goes to the Father but by me. I'm a miracle worker. I'm a healer, Jesus said. And guess what? That miracle worker and that healer, he wants to come into your life today. Not only that, he wants to forgive you. He wants you to be what he created you to be from the very beginning. If you could have a brand new start from this very moment and do, do everything all over again and not have no account against you from God, would you take that chance? I'm preaching to you right now. You have that chance by faith. You can do that. Jesus Christ can do that for you. They all cried out. And as they went, they took notice as they went. They did what Jesus told them to do. And as they went, they were cleansed. I can see them going down the highway. Woo! Ah! No more leprosy. Hey, look, it's gone. The other one says, yeah. But one of them, he took notice when he was cleansed. He took notice as he was being cleansed. He said, man, I got to go back and say, thank you. Remember that song they just sang a while ago, thank you? Amen. I got news for you. One went back, and he went back, and he worshiped him, and he thanked him. The first thing Jesus asked this one was, where is the other nine? Was he expecting them to come back and thank him? I got news for you. The reason I'm here today, I'm thanking him for what he's done for me. He cleansed me. He forgave me. He 
healed me. He delivered me. He gave me a brand new start. And just like that one leopard, I want to be one of those that worship him and praise him. Because not only was I healed and delivered, God can make you whole. Jesus said, where are the other nine? And he also looked at the one that came back and he said, thy faith. What did it? His faith. Remember, faith always wins out. He not only was healed, he was made whole. Praise Now, if you understand that leprosy disease, it will eat your fingers off. It will eat your toes off. It will eat your ear. It will eat half of your body away. I see people right now have sickness and parasites in their body where it's just eating their flesh alive. And doctors are cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting because they don't know how to handle it. Praise God for medical help. But I got news for you. Medical help don't know how to heal anybody. Amen. They can't make you whole again. They can give you artificial fingers and artificial legs and artificial hands. I don't want artificial stuff. I want the real thing. Amen. And Jesus got the real thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they cried out and he said, your faith had made you whole. And every part that was his body that was missing, anything that was deteriorated, it was completely brand new. Now, the other nine had the opportunity, but they didn't have time to give thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving Thank you, Lord God, for giving your only begotten son. God gave his son, Christ Jesus, for every one of us that done wrong. I done wrong. You done wrong. Some of you are still doing wrong. Do you want to continue that lifestyle? Or do you want to turn around? Maybe you had a touch from Jesus. You're like them nine leopards. Maybe he touched you and you went down. Oh, I remember when the Lord did this. I remember when the Lord did that. Uh, one of these days, Lord, I'll be back here because I might have another need. And then you have to get back here and start all over again. God don't want you to lose your first love. That's what he means. Get back to your first love. Remember what he first done for you? Don't walk away from him. Walk towards him. And that way you'll be full of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. God wants you to be full of faith that we talked about there a little earlier. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Bible talks about in Romans chapter 4, verse 17 and 20, you can be strong in faith. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Strong faith stands and is persistent regardless of what's going on. The storm's coming. Maybe you're in the storm right now. Maybe everything's so full of corruption and discouragement and despair, just like the ship was full of water and your life's so full of discouragement and despair. I got news for you. Jesus is right there. He's telling you to rise up and rebuke it and stop it. The word rebuke means stop it. You don't have to continue on the wrong path. You can have the right path of righteousness, and God will heal you and deliver you and set you free. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn with me back in Mark, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 again. Follow along with your Bibles. Amen. Here we sign verse 29, Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians tried to do, and they were drowned. Now, every once in a while, I turn into History Channel, and they're still trying to explain that away. Because science thinks they're so smart. And they say, well, the Bible says there was a wind that blew up and there was a heap of water on one side, a heap of water on the left side, and they went across on dry land. Who? God's people. By faith, it took faith to step out into that ocean. <laughs> it took faith to step out in that Red Sea. It took faith to not turn around and say, oh, Pharaoh, we're sorry. Please take us back. We'll be your slave forever. That's what people do when they're walking away towards God. And all of a sudden they turn around. Egypt is a type of the world, and you say, I'm going back into sin. I'm going back into my old lifestyle. I'm going back the way it used to be. I was better off back there than it is now because there's so many things that have to change right now. Don't let the devil get you going backwards. Apostle Paul said it this way, forget those things that are behind you and press toward the high calling of God and go forward. And when they went forward, God says, okay, now I got somebody walking by faith and not by sight. And when he walked into that Red Sea, not before, when they stepped into it, by faith, the sea departed, a heap of water on one side, a heap of water on the other side, and God's people went across on dry ground. That takes faith. Now, I've been down to Baltimore already, and they have the place where you go down on the ground, they have all the sharks and all the different type fish in there and there glass containers in there and the swordfish and the stingrays and everything else and I get down in there and them things are up on both sides like this and you look I don't know if you've ever been in one of those things and you know, I thank God that that glass is there <laughs> you know because those things I do not want to become fish food <laughs> 
I like eating fish, but I don't want to become fish food. Amen? And I, every time I go through something like that, I think, how the Israelites thought it wasn't glass there. It was the power of God, the faithful God, that stopped the waters on one side, the heap of water on the other side. Everything that was in that ocean before was still going on, except for one place. For you walk by faith and not by sight. And the Egyptians... Well, I said, well, if they can do it, we can do it. I got news for you. Sinner out there, you can't do what a child of God can do, amen, without the author and the finisher of faith, which is Christ Jesus. You need Jesus in your life, amen. And they walked across on dry ground, amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11, verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down, amen, after they were compressed about seven days. Can you imagine walking around a city? Your enemy's on the inside, you're on the outside. You're fighting the ones that are on the inside, and you're on the outside. You're told to walk around the city and say nothing. What did that accomplish? <laughs> nothing, right? In the natural. And for six days they'd done that. One time around, every day for six days, and nothing happened. But they were told to do that. The man of God heard from God, and God said, this is what I want you to do. And then when the seventh day came, and that's why it's in the Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith. Amen. It says, by faith, they walked around seven times. It was bad enough walking around once yesterday. And I remember walking around it the day before. Don't you guys remember we walked? Wasn't, let's see. Wasn't it six days ago we started walking around this place? Yeah. Didn't we walk around there one? Yeah. Didn't we, do, didn't we do it the following day? You know, and I imagine people got discouraged. and said, what's the use? Why bother? See, some of you are walking by faith right now, but you're not seeing anything happen. Keep on walking. It's about ready to happen. I preached a message the other week. The best is yet to come. I got news for you. If they would have stopped and never went around the... The seventh day, seven times, and then shout it. It's easy to shout after the victory. It's easy to shout after you won. I go to sports events and listen to certain different ones, and you know I have certain teams that I like, and I got news for you. The teams that I like, when they win, people like me know it. And my team that I root for, they know it. But if my team loses, I got news for you. There ain't much shouting going on in my part. <laughs> First thing I want to find out is some ref made a bad call or something. Or some, some player wasn't up to par like he should be. Always trying to find an excuse. But I got news for you. On the seventh day around, the Bible says, they went across the city seven days, and by faith the walls fell down. Now, the amazing thing about all the walls falling down, there was one place... Where the wall did not fall, there was somebody, amen, and the next verse in Hebrews 11 lets us know who it was. By faith, the harlot, boy, does she have a reputation. <laughs> How many know what a harlot is? It's the same as a whore, amen. By faith, the harlot, Rahab, perished not with them that believed not when she received the spies with peace. Two spies of God were sent in to check out the city. The city looked like it was impossible. They got word that the people of God were in there. She hid them out. She hides them. She protects them. They make a promise to her, amen, that their God will not come against her. And she hung a scarlet ribbon out her window. Scarlet ribbon represents some blood of Jesus today. You got some blood covering your house. You got some blood covering your life. By faith, guess what? God will protect you. Just like when the walls of Jericho fell, all the walls fell everywhere but one spot. And not only that, God promised her, and the, they, the people of God promised her, get everybody of your household in your house this night, because everybody that's in your house will be spared. Just like when Noah built the ark, everybody that was in the ark was spared. Everybody that was in the whorehouse that night, guess what? They got saved. <laughs> they were spared. Amen. I can imagine when the morning rose up and everybody says, uh, where did these people come from? Oh, they were in the whorehouse last night. 
How come they didn't get killed? Because they were under the will of God. Boy, I can imagine the self-righteous people were talking at that day. Can you imagine? Some people will talk about where you've been, but if you're on God's mission, guess what? God says it's all right. Some of you out there have been doing God's world work, and then some people talked you out of it and condemned you, so you just stop. Don't you stop doing what God told you to do if it lines up with the Word of God? What if this woman would have stopped? What if nobody else would have got in her house? What if she didn't help people with God? See how she got blessed? She helped somebody that belonged to God. When you help somebody that belongs to God, God says, I got a blessing to pour out on you. Remember, faith always wins out. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 and 6. How many know God says, without faith, it's impossible to please me? Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe. Remember, now believe is a verb. It put action to it. You must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder. See, God wants to reward you. God don't want to beat you up with a lightning bolt. <laughs> I'm glad God ain't who people made me think he was when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, I thought God was sitting up there with a great big white robe on, a great big white beard, had a lightning bolt in his hand just waiting for Richard to mess up so he could kaboom. <laughs> I'm glad I ain't the God I serve. I have a God that's sitting up there on the throne where he always sat he said, I want to have mercy on Richard. Richard, I want to have mercy. I'm Richard. Oh, you're Richard too, right? Oh, you're Richard out there, and whatever name you might have, God wants to have mercy on you. And it takes faith to receive God's mercy. God is not trying to strike you down. God's trying to pick you up. God wants to get a hold of your right hand, like he said in Isaiah, get a hold of your right hand saying, I will hold thy right hand and I will help you. Will you put your hand in his hand today by faith? Will you let God help you through them situations? Or you still want to walk down that road of destruction and despair? Or you want God to be the one that's always there? Amen. We preach a lot about Mark chapter 5, verse 34. There was a woman with an issue of blood. She tried all that the world had to offer and got worse. Does your situation seem like it's getting worse after you tried everything else the world had to offer? This woman, one day, got faith inside of her. Remember, faith always wins out. Remember we read about blind Barnabas? Thy faith has made thee whole. Remember the ten leopards that went? They were in obedience, but one come back. His faith made him whole. Here was a woman that had an issue of blood. Amen. See, God's a God of variety. You're all variety out there. God could take care of every one of you if you have faith. By faith, she began to talk to herself. Some of you are talking to yourself out there. Now, I don't know if I believe that preacher or not. I got news for you. Believe the word of God. Some of you out there say, well, I'm worried about what they might think over here or think over there. Don't worry about what they think. It's what you and God think. Because that, every one of you are going to give account of yourself to God one of these days, whether you believe in it or not. All you atheists out there, you will bow before my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I say that in kindness and love because God wants to love you. Do you want to be loved or you want to keep on being hated? God don't hate you. You just hate yourself and don't know how to accept love. Amen. God can take all your hurts and all your wounds and all your hate and turn it into love. This woman said to herself, self, I know what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Tomorrow I'm getting up. I still ain't got no money because I spent all that I had. I'm still bleeding just as bad as I always was. My bills are all overdue. I'm still hurting, but I'm going to take a faith walk. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight, and I'm going to find Jesus. And when she went out and she found Jesus... There was a press of people all around him because everybody was trying to get to Jesus. The Bible says that she got down and touched the hem of his garment. She didn't have nobody to help her. Sometimes you people out there are using that. I don't have nobody to help me. Well, this preacher wants to help you today. God wants to help you. Your way out is helping yourself. Amen. By receiving faith that he has given you a measure of. Amen. That you can grow in that faith and receive him and turn your whole life around. She said within herself, when I touch the hem of his garment, I'm a going to be a made a whole. I'm going to be made whole. I'm not going to have no problems no more after I touch the hem of his garment. Her, she made a point of contact. Your point of contact is right where you're listening to this message today. Will you accept that point of contact? Will you stir up your faith right now? Will you reach out and let God touch you? He wants to touch you right now. She said within herself, when I touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. She pressed through and Jesus said, stop. Whoa. Somebody touched me. Well, the disciples saying, well, Lord, everybody's touching you today. He said, no, somebody touched me a little different. Somebody was believing. Amen. They put it into action. Amen. And she said, woman, 
Your faith has made you whole. You want to be made whole of the problem you're walking through today? You want the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? Amen. And Mark chapter 11 tells us to have faith in God. Mark chapter 11, starting at about the 22nd verse. Don't have faith in this preacher. Have faith in the God that I'm preaching about. Have faith in his word. This ain't my word. This is God's word. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 22. Have faith in God, Jesus said. For verily I say unto you, that's you, that whosoever, that don't leave none of you out, don't leave none of us out, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, your mountain's your problem, the mountain's a situation, the mountain's your storm, the mountain's your addiction, the mountain's the thing that people have labeled you with. The thing that they have weighed you down with. The thing that you think that you can't shake off. That the devil put upon you and sin has put upon you. God says, I want to set you free today. And knowing the truth will set you free. Say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in thy heart. Don't doubt it in your heart. Listen to your heart right now. God's speaking to your heart. God's speaking to you right now. Yeah, he's speaking to you too. Amen. Right now, God is speaking to your heart. And doubt not in your heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Whatever you're saying right now, you're going to have. You're saying right now, I'm no longer going to have this bondage on my life. You're not no longer going to have it. Are you going to say, I'm no longer going to have this hatred in my heart? You're not going to have this hatred in your heart. You're going to say, I'm not no longer going to be addicted to being a drunk and an alcoholic and a drug addict. Guess what? It's already started in your heart. That's where faith kicks in. It's a seed that's sowed in there. It will help you to become a winner. God wants to change your situation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of you have a curse on you because back in your father, three or four generations on down, people had bad conditions and the curse that was put on you. In your natural birth, follow the bloodline on down through, through your natural birth for three or four generations on down. But Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith, come to set you free today, and will you be free indeed? The curse can be removed, and the blessing will start today. You have to make that choice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you willing to make that choice? In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, Receive Christ Jesus into your heart by faith. As many as receive him to... To them he gave power to become the sons and the daughters of God. Amen. It says sons here, but in the second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, it says sons and daughters for you women out there too. Amen. Of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do you believe on the name of Jesus? By faith. Amen. And Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, I quoted it earlier, but if you're taking notes and you need to follow along, and you don't have a Bible, get a Bible, or find some Bible, believe in church, wherever you might be at, and get to hear the Word of God, and ask them to give you a Bible. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, By grace, by grace you are saved, through faith, not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. Any person that you ever meet that's born again and saved, didn't get it by works, they received it by a gift. God wants to give you a gift today. God wants to give you salvation today. Are you willing to make that step of faith? If you will, say this along with this preacher today. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you right now. I believe it in my heart. I receive the faith that you're stirring up within me. I take my measure of faith. I want to go from no faith to little faith, to great faith, to increasing faith, to strong faith, that I become what you created me to be. I'm no longer going to stay in bondage. I'm no longer going to stay in sin. Right now, I see the darkness disappearing in my life. I see the light. I see the light of truth that has lightened my mind and my heart. I accept it right now. And according to your word, if I will confess with my mouth, Right now, with my mouth, I confess, Romans 10, verse 9. If I confess with the Lord Jesus with my mouth and believe it in my heart, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, I ask him to be Lord of my soul. I shall be saved. With my heart right now, I believe that God has raised him from that dead. This very moment, this very moment, wherever I'm at, Lord, this very moment, I'm asking you to accept me by faith to cleanse me by faith, to forgive me by faith. 
I will be a child of the king and heirs of the salvation of God. And according to Romans chapter 8, verse 1, right now, right now, at this very moment, there's no more condemnation in my life because I'm no longer walking in the flesh. I'm walking in the spirit. I am a spiritual child of God. I am a spiritual being. My soul is saved. My spirit is enlightened. My body will start following the ways of the Lord. I'll start denying myself. I'll start picking up my cross and daily and follow Jesus. Just like blind Barnabas, start following Jesus in the way. Lord, show me the way. Help me, Lord. When I'm weak, Lord, make me strong. Lord, help me to be the one that you created me to be. I am forgiven. I am a child of God. Some of you are being healed in your body by his stripes. Some of you feel the burden leading off of you and a chip that you had carried on your shoulder will no longer be there. Instead of hatred, you have love. You have the seeds of the Spirit of God. Love, joy, peace, gladness, happiness. Amen. God's long-suffering with you and you're going to put up with people for a long time because God will put up with you for a long time for eternity. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me from a burning hell. I thank you for giving me everlasting life, abundant life. And according to your word, right now, this very moment, I am saved. And grace by faith wins out. Amen. Anybody here today need special prayer for yourself or behalf?